scripture were ethereal beings, surprising beings, or came as dreams in the night. Sometimes they came in very much human form, and the angels that we hear about today are two of those kind of angels, angels just like us. And so as we light the Christ candle today, we think of the ways in which we can bring the message of God into the world. Jerusalem. 
Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew, became strong, and he was filled with wisdom and grace. God was upon him. Thanks be to the Lord for this word. The passage about Jesus' circumcision is uh, one that we often overlook. And yet it is central to an understanding of Jesus as a person, as a, uh, as a Jew living in Palestine in the first century. Luke is very careful to uh, explain to his audience that his parents, Joseph and Mary, were very careful to observe all of the uh, religious requirements of them according to the law of Moses. And so these events take place not in a local synagogue as would be the norm if they were home up in Nazareth, but they decided to go into the temple in Jerusalem rather than the synagogue in Bethlehem, which was a few hours walk away. The first Jesus trips into Jerusalem. Taking a baby on a trip uh, can be a, a bit of an adventure. Uh, we had the, the great joy in our home at uh, the weekend before Christmas, having our family celebrations of having the newest member to our family, Amy, who was born in November, come all the way from Tilsonburg and uh, spend Christmas with us. And that was great. She's so small. She's even a month old. She's uh, not as big as our kids were when they were born. Not quite yet six pounds. Very, very tiny. <clears throat> We had the opportunity when she was uh, just two weeks old to meet her for the first time and when we went down to Tilsonburg. One of the, the odd things that you take a baby out in public is that all manner of people, whether they know you or not, all come around and cluster and you get all sorts of oohs and ahs and isn't she sweet and oh what a cute baby and what's the baby's name and oh she seems very small, all that kind of stuff. So you can imagine Mary and Joseph on the eighth day after Jesus was born, bundling him up and making that trip from Bethlehem into Jerusalem. Well, now, when you go to Bethlehem and Jerusalem, you'll find that it's basically like uh, going from Oshawa to Kurtz or from Oshawa to Whitby. It's like right there. But in those days, there was a little bit of space between So they went, they took him there, and the thing happened. You know, you bring the baby into the temple, and everybody, oh, what a cute little baby, what's his name? Oh, well, we haven't quite got to that yet, you know, we have to do all the right things, we've got to get him circumcised, we've got to get to, uh, oh yes, and all that kind of stuff, and they eventually get there, get him circumcised, and of course, I would imagine like any child having surgery done on it without any anesthetic, and scream like anything. <coughs> Doesn't say that. But he would. Guaranteed. But then this odd thing happens. There were all sorts of other people. The temple was always, always a busy place. The first thing that Luke draws attention to is this man. Simi. Who is he? What is significant about him? Well, the scripture doesn't explain that. We have to go outside of scriptural sources to find out who he is. He was known. He was, depending on which side of the Roman occupation you had to be on, he was either famous or infamous. If you were pro-Rome, he was pro. 
if you were anti-Rome, he was kind of a hero. Simeon was what we call in our day and age an insurgent. But he wasn't the kind of insurgent that was about planting roadside bombs or ransacking Roman buildings or hijacking carriages at night. He was the kind of insurgent that would talk people up. He was an organizer. He was well known. Simeon was taking a great risk coming into the temple that day. Because that would mean he was exposed to the authorities. If someone had wanted to finger him at that point, he would be arrested. And knowing the Romans, would likely be crucified. Big risk coming in. Something led him to take that risk, something important. It talks about in the scripture about this fulfillment of promise. It talks about this thing that he'd been looking for that would um, kind of validate what he had been doing for his life. That it was something that he was setting the groundwork for. A readiness in the minds of the population for uh, the fulfillment of Israel's promise. You see, Jesus' appearance as an adult some years later had been prepared for in advance. He wasn't just kind of appearing, having people gathered in the thousands. This work of preparing the ground had been going on since Simeon had met him, a little baby, in Jerusalem for the first time. The other thing he did was he gave a warning. He gave a warning to Mary about what was going to happen, that Jesus' words and actions were going to be divisive. And then it would strike to her very core what this would mean. I don't think many young parents with eight-day-old babies would take kindly to somebody saying that about their child. I know we all hope for amazing things from our children. We have expectations, we have hopes, we have dreams, we want to see what their potential will be. But to be told that your child will be the cause of much civil unrest, probably not high on that list. The second individual, probably after hearing Simeon sounding off to the crowds, is a different person altogether. And again, the scripture doesn't overtly tell us what's significant about her if you don't know what's going on at the time. Her name's Anne. Nothing remarkable there. She's from the tribe of Asher. Well, she's a little far from home. What is significant about her is the title she is given. A daughter of Fanuel. Now, who is Fanuel? Everybody's flipping through their angelology books by now because you've heard the name with the suffix L, which means something, and it is the avenger of God. And one of the archangels, you know, Michael, you know, Gabriel. Well, here's Fanuel. And Fanuel is the avenger. And those who were the children of Fanuel were in direct opposition. 
opposition to the demon that they believed was giving power to the Herodian dynasty. You see, they thought, they believed, that the only way that the Herodian dynasty could have any kind of power at all was because they had some power source outside of Israel. They were a puppet dynasty set up by the Greeks and then reinforced by the Romans. And how could they still be there when there was in Israel descendants of the true royal line? Joseph, of course, being one of them. And this baby is brought into the temple and one of the people who is in the temple, and why is she there? It says that Luke says that she is in the temple always, never leaves. That's strange enough. Um, perhaps she was there seeking sanctuary. This is something that's happened in our own country in our day, where refugees who are at risk of deportation to a troubled country will come into a church and reside within the church as the authorities will not come in to forcibly remove them. There's a clue. She's been there for a long time. The children, the sons and daughters of Pharaoh were not a, again, a violent insurgent group. But they were about looking for signs of divine intervention. And when they saw them, point them out. And at the same time, looking for signs of demonic activity. And when they saw them, point them out. They were uh, kind of in our political system, the, uh, the loyal opposition. Their role is to hold the feet of government to the fire. And they did that. But of course, again, when you have a dictatorship, opposition is not respect. And Anna was at risk even as an old woman. She says she's 84, but she won't keep her mouth shut. And so she's there that day as well. It says that she's always and never leaves. And that's important. <coughs> Her role is a little bit different from Simmons. She is talking about the redemption of Jerusalem, the holy city of David, the throne of God. For her, it is not so much a insurrectionist kind of a thing as Simeon had been forecasting, but more of, uh, well, what does redemption mean? Redemption means a buying back. It's like when you go into the store and you have a coupon and you redeem the coupon, which gives you uh, some kind of a, a bargain on whatever it is you buy, it is a transactional thing. That Jesus is going to do something of a transactional nature. She doesn't say what. There's no ominous warning attached to what she says. She just says that he is going to in Jerusalem. These are clues along the road to figuring out who Jesus is and what he's going to do. 
And the individuals are kind of critical in that. They're kind of critical in preparing the population to understand that. One of the things that the church kind of uh, has taken on as a, as a moniker is kind of similar to Anna's moniker as being a daughter of Fanny Raw. That we call ourselves children of God. And what does that mean to be a son or a daughter of God? What are angels again? Angels are those who bring messages of God to others. And the angels that we're talking about today are human angels. They are people just like us. They're people who have uh, political awareness, social awareness, as in the case of Simeon. Or they may be... Uh, who are themselves at risk, like Simeon and Anna. But they're people who are willing to speak out. And both of these people were showing them what they knew about this child to everyone around. Church. Thank you.